And this is Ken Kreitzer for Sons of the American Legion Radio, uh, another one of our special in-depth uh, chats. And today we have a chance to talk with Brian Heyman, who is a independent sports writer here in the New York City area, has a long background in journalism with uh, the Journal News and also the New York Times graduate of Ithaca College. Brian, how are you today? Doing okay, doing okay. Happy to be on with you. Happy to be anywhere with, with the world in such a scary place right now. It is hard to imagine. Um, and we always do a shout out to uh, the healthcare workers uh, doing such a great job, the dark doctors, nurses, uh, medical staff, hospitals right around the corner from us, White Plains Hospital, and uh, all of the folks that have been helping them, police, fire, and the military, uh, quite a number of Army uh, National Guard, um, Army Corps of Engineers, and the Navy uh, uh, who brought the ship into uh, New York City. So uh, we're always in awe of the work they're doing right now, uh, tackling, uh, fighting this COVID uh, crisis. Now, Brian, maybe why would you? What was the last event that you covered? Why, where did it? Where did? Uh, what, what was that game? You know, I'm, it's been a while now, so I'm I'm, I'm leaving. It was the. Uh, uh, Game early in March, uh, Stony Brook uh, men's basketball in the uh, quarterfinals of America East. So um, it, it just, uh, it, it's strange because it just seems like forever now. It's, uh, usually it's, uh, you're, you get through with your game and then there's always another game coming down the, down the road very quickly and uh, now there are, there are no games. So uh, it's, I, I can't even remember what happened to that game. It seems like it's been so long ago. Yeah, no, I, my last game was uh, the Iona uh, game in the uh, in the Metro Atlantic Athletic Tournament down in Atlantic City on the Tuesday night, uh, which Iona won. I couldn't stick around for the game on Wednesday uh, where they lost. Uh, and then the tournament was canceled the next day on a Thursday. But I was in the middle of covering uh, Army hockey. They had a series in the uh, Atlantic Hockey League scheduled for uh, that weekend uh, to play Niagara. And uh, we had just finished uh, covering Army basketball uh, last uh, nights for uh, last games for two great stars, uh, Tommy Funk and uh, Matt Wilson of Army. They lost in the first round uh, uh, Patriot League game to uh, Lafayette. And uh, so uh, it uh, really is something uh, uh, what's happened. Um, what, what are you, maybe we could uh, kind of go through the end of the season. Certainly college basketball was remarkable in New York for uh, uh, Seton Hall. Uh, their star, uh, Miles Powell, received, uh, was named the Lieutenant Haggerty Award winner just today as a top basketball player in the metropolitan area. Uh, what would you think of um, uh, Seton Hall? St. John's had, a, had an improved season. A lot of energy added by Mike Anderson there. What did you think of St. John's and Seton Hall in the Big East this year? Well, you know, I, th I thought St. John's, to, to a certain extent, um, you know, maybe overachieved a little bit. They still need an influx of more talent. Um, it, it didn't help them that Mustafa Heron was injured for a lot of that uh, Big East season with an ankle problem. Uh, you know, we talked about the Haggerty uh, uh, in all med awards there, um, Julian uh, Champagne was the uh, uh, rookie of the year in the area. So he's a promising freshman for St. John. But, you know, I think they have a very good coach. I think I've said that before, Mike Anderson. Um, and uh, he's never had a uh, losing season as a coach in college. So, uh, you know, I, I would be uh, cautiously optimistic that uh, he would be able to kind of build off, off this season. Uh, you know, Seton Hall, uh, we all wish uh, the what ifs, uh, you know, if they had gotten to play in the NCAA tournament. They had a very strong team. They had a very good coach in Kevin Willard. Uh, you know, uh, you know the, the guys like Miles, uh, you know, Powell don't come along all the time. So, uh, uh, you know, I saw them play uh, early in the season. And, uh, you know, you're, you're still a work in progress at that point, but you could see that you could see the, the talent. Uh, on, on that team. So, um, you know, they, they had a very strong team this year. And, I, you know, I'm sure a lot of 
uh, college teams are wondering, well, if we, if we had that NCAA tournament, what, what would have happened? How far could we have gone? And, uh, you know, they'll never know the answer. And, you know, you, you just staring a little bit, you look at uh, Hofstra, again, they, they had a very good season, uh, won that uh, uh, CAA uh, tournament. And, you know, they're kind of, in a way, it's kind of sad for the guys who are not coming back because they kind of robbed that, that moment, that March Madness moment that, uh, that the hospital program has not experienced, you know, since I think 2001. Yeah, and um, uh, Tim, we follow closely Iona. Uh, went to the MAC tournament. They won their first game, but then lost in the second game. And uh, uh, Trey Arnold filled in for Tim Clues, who we, we always shout out to. and, and Wish him the best on recovering from uh, uh, a medical illness, uh, and we're hoping opening we're hoping he's doing very uh, doing better. I actually exchanged uh, email with him the other day, and he was very upbeat. Uh, but he always is upbeat, and uh, so our best wishes out to Tim Clues. What did you think of Iona's play? That EJ Crawford had a terrific season. Was a first team All uh, Med Area player, and uh, Tuan Agee. Uh, what do you think of the of the players uh, this year uh, for Iona? Yeah, Crawford, a very good player. Uh, he made first team all, you know, all met. Um, but I, I think the thing with uh, uh, you know Tim Clubs, first of all, excellent, excellent coach. I mean, his record uh, stands for itself at Iona. But you know now, you know it shifts where you know Patino's coming in. And, uh, you know, I think that he's going to, his name alone is going to draw a, a lot of good talent to, uh, to come to that, that program. And, uh, you know, it's a controversial, uh, controversial kind of signing of a head coach. And yeah. I think there was some criticism of that. Uh, but I think there's, you know, he comes with baggage, but he also, there's no disputing what a, outstanding uh, college coach he is so I, I you know I think you know whatever happened this season I think they're going to uh, you know build off that I think they're going to you know Iona is gonna, really going to take off uh, under Patino if if uh, the NCAA doesn't crack down on any past the uh, past things from the from the uh, Louisville days um, but yeah if not I mean I think from a basketball perspective, that uh, I, Iona again should be a dominant program in the MAC. It should be uh, interesting to watch. Uh, I, honestly, uh, I was stunned when I heard that uh, uh, Rick Patino was coming to Iona because uh, I knew I, of the situation, Louisville, uh, very serious uh, matters there. Um, and uh, I was kind of surprised uh, a Catholic school would go for that go in that direction. But as you, it turned out, um, uh, the new president at, at Iona, Dr. Uh, Seamus Carey, uh, had, when he was uh, serving as a president of Transylvania University in Kentucky, had met Patino or one of his, uh, his staff and, uh, and came away with a good impression. And uh, then uh, Bob Lapenta, uh, Iona alumnus, who, whose name is on the new brand new business school building just opened in January at Iona. Knew Rick Patino from uh, uh, horse racing. Um, Bob LaPenta having won uh, two Belmont stakes and, uh, and knew and felt good about Rick Patino from that. So we'll see. I knew Rick uh, when he was the basketball coach of Providence, my alma mater. And he got Providence in the second year uh, to uh, the NCAA tournament final four in New Orleans, played in front of 65,000 people. And then he went on to the Knicks. So we'll see. Uh, certainly a lot of media attention for Iona about Rick Pitino. I think everybody's covered him. Yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, it, from, from basketball, they're, they're going to do well. They just announced their, their incoming uh, recruiting class, his first class. And, um, you know, he's recruited, I think he's recruited four guys or at least six, eight coming in. Uh, he's looking at seven foot. One uh, player uh, who's supposedly a good shot blocker with an outside touch. So uh, uh, you know, there's there's uh, I think good things ahead 
uh, as far as wins and losses there uh, for Iona. But yeah, it's a, it's a, a very controversial move, I would think. Yeah, and, and I think right now in education, everybody's really worried about uh, whether they have to give refunds back. And Iona said they were going to give refunds back. Dr. Carey was one of the first uh, for this semester when they shifted to online. And then everyone is concerned about uh, how many students are going to be able to afford uh, college um, uh, in the fall, uh, given the drop in the stock market, loss of jobs by parents and, and uh, uh, the economy overall. So we're going to see, you got to hope for the best on a, all these factors of this uh, unprecedented event we're living through. Now, uh, Brian, on the professional front, um, the NBA is hoping to regain their season and the NHL. Uh, I thought, you know, starting the NHL, I think it's more difficult for them uh, to play into the summertime as deep as they might, as the NBA is talking about. Um, and again, uh, they, I guess for both sports, it would mean starting uh, without spectators and trying to get back. And maybe in some cities, they'll allow spectators and not others. Certainly, I can't imagine New York is going to have spectators at events uh, until some point in the summer at the earliest. Yeah, I don't even know, even if they'll allow uh, events uh, with just with just the, the players, because, you know, you, you need stadium uh, and arena, I mean, arena workers to, to, to uh, be in involved and you have broadcast people and broadcast engineers and media um, and people uh, just to, to, to clean up after everything and uh, it's you know it's 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 a very murky situation right now with that NHL they all, all the teams were maybe uh, you know 12 to uh, 14 games left in their regular season well do you just you know call off those games, if you want to come back and just go to uh, an NHL type, uh, you know, an expanded uh, playoff situation, which which I believe has has been floated out there with, yeah. with more teams, uh, because some, like the New York teams, are, are were on the right on the cusp of, of of the playoff picture. But if you don't get that chance to complete your regular season, uh, do you let in the extra teams? It's just, um, and you know, do you also move the whole thing to a neutral site where it's a, there's not as big of an impact um, of the virus, but you know, the virus is everywhere. So you, you just, I, you know, they're all floating around in, in the planning stage. What do we do? What are the possible scenarios? And the NBA as well, um, they originally talked about, you know, it's floated out there, oh, maybe we'll move everyone to Las Vegas and put all the players in the same hotel. Uh, and they could just you know walk to the to the arena. Um, would would that work? Uh, you know, sports would become just like a televised thing, but uh, with, with no fans uh, allowed at, at all. But you know, it's uh, you know it's a tough it's a tough call. What, what to do? I'm sure they're waiting uh, waiting to see how things develop over the course of the you know May and maybe even June. To, to know which which direction to go, or do they do they pick it right uh, right up and, and 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 after having like a three week training camp or something like that to get back in shape because it's been hard for guys to work out except you know lift weights in their basement uh, and uh, and then do they delay the start of of next season's training camp and then if there's a second wave of this illness coming through and it becomes seasonal in the fall what happens to, to next season. So uh, everything's kind of, uh, you know, so, so up in the air right now. And it, there's questions of economics and there's, there's questions uh, of public health and, uh, and including the player's health, which is paramount. Certainly, and, I, and everyone who works in the sports business, as you said, all the people who have to be there to uh, stage a, a, an event. Um, and then uh, media, and then teams and not, and you know, the concern is uh, uh, certainly this virus has hit the African-American uh, community disproportionately and also older people and you have older coaches. Uh, so leagues have to take it uh, uh, very carefully. And part of it is just, you know, it's the national debate is availability of testing. 
Uh, even my company. So, you know, before we go back in our office building, we probably, everybody will get tested to make sure that they're okay. Um, and uh, so, and, and that level of testing is, Governor Cuomo says almost daily just isn't available yet. And hopefully might be available in the near future. So we'll have to see. Uh, what do you think about Major League Baseball? Um, you know, there was the idea of playing uh, season in just Florida and Arizona. And uh, uh, it just doesn't seem like that idea has, has taken legs yet. Uh, what, are you, what are you hearing on Major League Baseball reopening? Well, they, you know, I think they, they want to do it but, uh, at some point in the, in the summertime. Uh, you know, you have the three plans that have been floated out there, and I'm sure they have other plans as well. Um, as you just said, the, the Florida and the Arizona uh, model, uh, and uh, which would just you know, would do away with leagues for the season. You would just have uh, whoever spring training site was in Florida and whoever was in Arizona. And that's that's the way you go, uh, which in a way seems uh, extreme, uh, but this is an extreme year, actually. Uh, and you also had the that first thing that was floated with the Arizona plan with all the teams in Phoenix, locked up in a hotel for four and a half months, except to go to the ballpark, uh, away from their families, which uh, uh, players were already uh, not, not thrilled about for that long. Um, and they would have to be tested often. Uh, and then also, you, uh, I think, uh, yeah, recently they had another th three-point plan where there would be teams in Arizona, teams in Texas, um, at Arlington, uh, the new stadium the Texas Rangers have, uh, and possibly Houston, and uh, also the, uh, the, the Trout in St. Petersburg, uh, and possibly uh, the Marlins uh, Park as well. Um, it, it's, uh, it would be complicated, and I think, you know, if you have, uh, say, teams play at their own ballparks and there's no fans, but then, you know, what if they don't uh, let, you know, the New York teams even have uh, games with, with no fans? And Los Angeles, they've been very proactive in saying that, you know, sports are not going to be normal when this, for the rest of this season, the uh, rest of this year, actually. So, uh, you know, it's another, it's, it's another uh, perplexing question on what to do. Uh, and also economically, you know, the players are, are not happy about, they've already had their, you know, salaries cut there. They've got a, a, a deal with, uh, if they play, that the things, uh, their contract will be prorated. So they'll lose one, one sixty second of their salary for each game that was yeah. missed. But then if there's no, uh, the commissioner, Rob Manfred, has floated a 40% uh, you know, intake, uh, you know, of income from gate receipts and concessions and parking, if that's not coming into the owners, are they going to want to make the players take, uh, you know, an even steeper salary reduction? And, you know, Tony Clark, the head of the union, said that no, <laughs> that the negotiation was over when they received uh, 170 million advance uh, through, what, the third week of May on their salaries uh, or guarantee, and, uh, and then this prorated Deal. So that would have to be worked out, and you could see that being acrimonious. Um, yeah, and, with, with the, and if you get back to the neutral site thing, would the players put up with being sequestered in one place for four and a half months without their families? Um, but they want to be paid as well, and they're well, and they're well paid for their time. You know, it's, it's, it's a big question. Well, what's going to what's going to happen here? But they, you know, at, at the very least, uh, you know, it's going to be a shortened season. They talked about those uh, seven inning double headers. Uh, which would be uh, interesting. Uh, another so thing would be college. Well, uh, yes, yeah, a minor league baseball um, and uh, home run derbies. If you're tied after nine innings, which I don't know if I would be in favor of <laughs> because uh, it just seems too hokey. But um, uh, another thing, with you know, where it's, it's total speculation now and total, uh, you know, what's uh, planning? What what are the different scenarios that they could do? And then they'd have to get to serious discussions if, you know, we always say weather permitting, well, this will be virus permitting uh, that they could get back to playing. Uh, yeah, but you also think about what if one player gets sick, uh, then do you quarantine a team, an entire team for two weeks? 
And what, what happens there? Do you shut down the league again? Uh, will there be false starts if they come back? Um, and uh, so, so it's very, it's kind of complicated right now. Yeah, and that, that situation with players becoming sick, uh, people may say, well, it's a very low hospitalization rate. Well, you know, I think you heard the story that there were, there was a gathering of, of area college basketball players, mostly uh, guys who had played in the 80s and 90s in uh, Scarsdale. And then, and that was the weekend of about March 14th. It was just after all the basketball tournaments were canceled. And uh, a number of them came, a uh, number of them got sick after that. And two died actually, including Jonathan Duck, who was Iona on this, who I remember playing very well. Uh, so, um, you know, these tragedies, these, this tragic loss of life is not just for older people. It's, uh, it's uh, a lot of at-risk groups and some people may not even realize they're at risk. So it's gonna have to be very carefully managed. We'll see what happens. We certainly would love to see baseball come back. I'm starting to get a little worried about football. I was on a conference call with the Army football coach uh, two weeks ago, Jeff Munkin, and uh, they, you know, they're planning, you know, just like the NFL is planning for its draft this week, uh, they are planning, uh, you know, uh, their game plans for the year and they're working, they're doing Zoom calls with their players uh, to go over, um, uh, set it, bring in a new defense there. Uh, but it's going to get get iffy. And I there's a scenario, the University of Oklahoma is coming in, bringing their football team to Mikey Stadium, second week of the season in September. And you wonder if the people out there are going to really be comfortable bringing a team into the New York area. Um, yeah, I'm sure there'll be some second thoughts about it. Hopefully everything's pretty much uh, over by then, but we'll have to see. What, what's your thought about football season? It's, it's, you know, with this year, it's very hard to see um, a stadium filled with, uh, you know, 70,000, 80,000 people. Now they talked about having, you know, maybe reduced capacity where everyone's, you know, six seats apart from each other or, or something to that, to that extent. But there was also a survey, um, and this was one just for football, uh, about fans. And it said that I think 72% do not want to attend games until there's a vaccine for this. And, you know, vaccine, maybe it's next year, maybe who knows how long, how long it's going to be. Uh, um, so, I, you know, I think there's going to be reduced attendance to, to begin with at all sports. But, uh, you know, in football, uh, there's so much contact there for even the players. It would, it would just seem like risky business. And uh, there was, I think, talk out of uh, UConn today that, uh, you know, thinking about canceling fall sports, except for the ones where they're naturally distanced. Um, I don't know if that's going to come, come about or not, but, you know, the colleges are going to have some, some hard questions Cause that's to ask football, about. Football is such a revenue driver for college athletics. So for the football playing schools, uh, it's, a, it's a big impact. There had been, excuse me, some discussion about moving the college football season to the spring, but I think that would be kind of a last resort uh, to do. So I'll have to see and hope, and hope things get better uh, uh, in, in, in uh, June and, and July, because uh, training camps that have to open up the 1st of August for college football, obviously, a uh, week or two earlier for the NFL. So we'll see. Now, Brian, we've got to ask you about um, uh, the, the media business. Um, you're a, a professional sports writer, and uh, uh, it was already a difficult time for many before this happened. What, what, what's, what's been happening uh, for you and, and your, your friends in the sports writing business? Well, I look at the, the media overall, and you see that uh, – more than 30,000 news media people have either been you know, laid off or had their pay cut or furloughed. So uh, the advertising dollars are way, way down in, in the uh, media business. Uh, with everyone trapped in, there's uh, no place to, not too many places to go. So there's uh, been a really lack of advertising money. Um, and and I, I don't, so that, I don't even know if that figure in, includes um, uh, you know, all the people who, who work freelance, like myself, 
and there's no games and there's no practices to go to. So there's uh, no, uh, not much work at, at the moment. Uh, so it, it's very difficult. There's a lot of freelance people who are in a, uh, in, in not a good, good place right now. And, and you have to wonder what's going to happen down, down the road is, uh, what, what's going to happen with budgets for, for media companies and for newspapers and websites, uh, coming off this, this situation and how long is this situation, you know, the, the sports have to worry about how, how long uh, until they start up again and what's going to happen the rest of this year. And, uh, you know, the, the sports writers who, who do not have a steady, uh, you know, full-time uh, gig, so to speak, uh, you know, have to worry as well. So I think, um, you know, I think it's, it's difficult for, for everybody right now. I mean, the key thing is we all want to, uh, to, to, uh, to live another day. So it's, uh, yeah. we all want to stay well. That's the most, the most important thing. But, you know, these, these side economic issues have also, uh, you know, been into the conversation as well. And that's why you see some states are trying to reopen their, their states so, so quickly, which might, might not be the best idea at the moment, but they're, they're going, going for it, it seems. And uh, so with, with the media and, and, this, and the sports writing business, it's, it's also a difficult spot right now. Absolutely. You know, I, I will ask you one point. I read something uh, in uh, the paper uh, the last week about the New York Times that it was having more success in digital media than people might expect. They said they still had 1,700 paid journalists, I think the number was, and that uh, their digital subscription base was quite significant in comparison to uh, the rest of the industry. Is that what you're seeing? Are there a few companies that have figured out how to make digital reporting into a successful business? Well, I think, you know, they, they come with a certain cachet as the Washington Post and uh, uh, maybe a few other places, Wall, Wall, Wall Street uh, Journal, where they have, they have their audience. And, um, you know, I think there's such a hunger for news right now and people, you know, don't have a lot to do right now. <laughs> they have the time to, uh, to, to, you know, read up on things and, and, and watch watch them. So that's what makes it, it's like, you know, such a strange situation where uh, with people getting uh, laid off and yet there's, there's a thirst for content at the moment. Uh, so, you know, when you're built on an, an advertising model uh, and you need that income to be successful, that, that makes things more diff difficult. But you know, there, there are the certain organizations that are uh, are doing very well, and, and and their name, you know, carries a lot of clout, and that's going to you know carry through no matter what. Yeah, branding is certainly key. And uh, uh, Brian Heyman, uh, uh, do you have a, a final thought for us uh, today? Uh, as we're about uh, five six weeks now into this uh, coron uh, coronavirus COVID nineteen crisis, um, we're hoping things will start normalize. Uh, in the coming month or so, uh, final thought for us. Well, you know, I, I hope I hope things are, are going to uh, get better quickly. I don't, but I don't really see it getting better quickly in in our the New York area because we're you know where we were hit hit so hard here, and I think it's going to be a uh, you know a, a gradual climb back to normal. See whatever normal means right now. Um, so. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's it's going to be, uh, I believe, uh, you know, a hard comeback for you know the economy and uh, and for and for really life life as as we knew it. Um, and I'm not sure if it'll ever be fully the same. Or I mean, is every fan now going to be have their temperature taken along going through the security line uh, going into the stadium? It's going to be. Uh, it's going to be different, I think, a little bit, especially for this year. There's so much uncertainty about this year as far as sports is concerned. And, and you know, we could guess, and that's what we're doing. We're guessing, and I think the, the heads of the leagues are guessing and planning, but there's no way to really know. We just have to wait and see what, 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 what comes about. Well, Brian Hammond, great to chat with you. You've had a distinguished career with the Journal News, with the New York Times, uh, graduate of Ithaca College. And uh, you, I, I was really amazed. You've been very successful as an independent uh, writer 
in the last uh, few years where I, where not everyone is able to do it. And, and you really deserve a, a lot of credit for uh, uh, standing out as a digital writer in this environment. Well, th thanks very much. I was, uh, you know, I've also in recent years, I've done a lot of work with Newsday, uh, you know, Long Island based uh, newspaper and, and uh, internet site as well. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not the easiest, uh, not the easiest uh, road to go. And, and, you know, my career has had, had its share of layoffs as well along the way. Um, but, uh, you know, I've been doing this a long time and I still love it. And, um, you know, I, I, I miss, uh, you know, now that I, I haven't since this, uh, the shutdown has come about, I haven't been working. And, and so I do miss those assignments and I hopefully will get some uh, coming up in the near future, but I, I do miss, uh, I do miss what I've done for uh, my pretty much my entire career. Yeah, well, well, Brian, we'll look forward to seeing you hopefully at Yankee Stadium before uh, too much of the summer uh, goes by. I know we you know, always enjoy it. We get down there a couple of times a year. And we do want to pass our condolences to the Steinbrenner family on the passing of Hank Steinbrenner, who I never really met, but I, I have had the pleasure of meeting uh, Hal Steinbrenner and Jennifer. Steinbrenner at different events. They've always been very cordial. And I know that uh, just makes a tough situation so much worse when you lose a family member. Uh, so our condolences to everyone at the Yankees and the Steinbrenner family on the passing of, of Hank Steinbrenner uh, last week. Yeah, I, I met uh, Hank a few years ago. Um, he was uh, at a charity golf tournament in the Bronx and I you know, interviewed him and I uh, very pleasant and engaging uh, man, and uh, you know, a six, 63 and, and gone, and not, and not not from the virus, but another illness. Uh, so yeah, it is a sad time for, for the uh, Steinbrenner family. Yeah, so our, our condolences uh, to them. So Brian, uh, we'll look forward, and we'll do another chat in a couple of weeks. But uh, uh, it is spring, and hopefully, we'll be back at uh, Yankee Stadium and City Field uh, soon for some. Uh, Major League Baseball. I think we're all, everyone's looking forward to that. Thank you for your time today and your insight. Always a pleasure to chat. Thank, thanks very much, Ken. Uh, very, very happy to be here. Our pleasure. This is Ken Kratzer for Sons of the American Legion Radio. Have a great day, everybody, and stay safe.